My experience has taught me that intent is everything. We are fallible and make mistakes, but if our intent is honest and honourable and not to the detriment of others, then we can be confident we are on the right path. Our intentions drive us to do more. They are the foundations of how we live our life. Even when people seek to discourage us, turning your hopes and dreams into intentions is the first step to living an extraordinary life. Our intentions are the basis of our artistic pursuits. A snapshot becomes a photograph the second we intend it to be something more meaningful. If the action that follows falls short, move out of your own way, try again and know that the intent was true. So intent is particularly important with your photography because you want to be in total control of the things that go inside your frame and you don't want to have things creeping in unintentionally to your frame. So always the stuff we sort of say, looking around the edge of the frame. Are you aware of what's getting in your frame? Are you aware of what you are leaving out of your frame? That's intent, that should all be intentional. It is important and in this case, it's quite significant as well because I have this tree here and I have this tree here, which is kind of getting in the foreground and I don't want that. I want to be shooting through this narrow gap in the trees towards that hill or mountain at the other side of this valley because these, the trees that go up the side of that mountain just have a really beautiful tone and quality to them. The different tones throughout those trees. And I think it's just, it just struck me as I was walking up this hill. Now, I pretty much only want the trees. So I am intentionally leaving out the mountain at the top and I'm also intentionally leaving out the sky as well. And I'm just waiting, or I'm, just, I'm in at, what am I, about 135 millimeters on the 70 to 200 to focus in on those trees and just fill the frame with those trees. So a lot of the time our intent would be to have a foreground, a midground, and then a background and create that depth in an image, which often does work very well and is a good thing to follow. However, not every single shot or every single photograph you make requires depth. You can use other things, you can use shape, you can use the, the proportions of light in the scene as well. And you might just end up with quite a 2D image like this one's going to be, uh, with other things going on in, it, on in it. It may be a little bit more simple, a bit more artistic even maybe, I don't like saying that, but it's potentially the case. And that's what I'm going for here. Not that I'm saying it's gonna be artistic though. The thing that's gonna make this one work, which is not working right at this second in time, is the light. I need some interesting light to strike those trees because they're all different tones and different shapes. When the light catches them, it's just creating a really interesting kind of shape and tone through the image, which is what initially caught my attention. Since then, the, clouds, the sun's gone behind the cloud. So it's just a case of waiting. So I know what I want from this image and my intention is there. Whether it works out or not is another matter, but that's certainly what I'm going for for this image, so it's just a case of now waiting. I do have a small gap in the clouds there about to come, so it'll be interesting to see, but without, without that light, it isn't working at all. But with it, I think it could be something half decent, at least a good first shot of the day. This is also my first trip to the Lake District in 2020. And I'm feeling teed, oh, can't even talk, feeling particularly unfit because I haven't been out as much as I normally do and I am still recovering from a back injury. Oh, so it's hard, just about to get to the top and a new view and a lot of wind should be about to open up. Oh, this is why I love the Lake District. There's a bit of snow on the tops of the mountains. The cloud is dramatic. The wind's battering me, but I don't mind. Oh, you've got to love it. You've got to love it.
So I'm set up for my second shot and I have a couple of problems that I'm dealing with at the moment. First and foremost is I quite fancy today shooting that absolutely amazing scene behind me, but there just isn't enough light on it at the moment to, I think, warrant an image. It's still a fantastic scene, but it's just very flat. Behind me though, I have that snow-capped mountain. I've found a lovely composition using the 70 to 200. I'll talk you through that in a minute. Second problem is this wind. It's so windy. I've got it at my back at the moment, so hopefully you can still hear me okay, but it's gusting up to about 40 miles an hour, I think, at the moment. So it's going from zero to about 40 miles an hour instantly, and it's catching me off guard, particularly with the, the camera on the tripod here and this lens, which is just acting like a sail. <laughs> so it's proving a bit challenging. But for the composition uh, behind me here, I have these intersecting mountains creating these really beautiful triangle shapes going through the image. They are then, I then have that snow-capped mountain right in the distance there. And I also have a nice, beautiful, in fact, bit of light bursting through that cloud, almost creating like a kind of fantasy type feel to the image. There's then actually some really interesting clouds is that light, it's quite low in the sky now, is catching those and just creating a beautiful warm light. Whoa, see what I mean? A beautiful warm light on, on that cloud. And it's just a fantastic mood to the scene. So I've got those beautiful intersecting triangles, then that uh, snow-capped mountain and the clouds, which are quite interesting. And the shape of the cloud is almost mirroring this first hill, which is kind of just going up that way there. Oh my God, it's so windy. <laughs> and yeah, so just <laughs> a fantastic shot. I'll turn around into the wind so you can hear it for a minute. <laughs> and it, as it dulls down a bit again, settings very quickly. Uh, I'm going for an aperture of about f8, one 125th of a second, ISO 200. I'll turn back around so you can hear me okay. And then I'm bracketing two stops either side because the snow on the top of that mountain is very bright as that light is catching it. And then the, the area just behind me here, that first hill is in much darker shadow. So I'm bracketing just so I can have full dynamic range, full control when I post. Bro, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Ah. <laughs> Luckily, it isn't that cold, and it hasn't been cold at all yet. So I'm quite pleased that there is some snow on the top of those mountains because it's really adding to this shot. So I'm gonna have to hold the camera down to get the shot. Let's do that now, into the wind. Hold it down. Two second time, hopefully my hat won't blow off. Bracketed shots. <laughs> there we go, let's have a look. Let's see. See if I can get out of the wind a bit. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's fantastic. I really like the look of that. I think once I get that edited and manage that exposure across that frame, it's gonna be a really beautiful shot and a memorable one as well, due to that wind. <laughs> Now, the other day when I was looking through my images from 2019, I ended up feeling a little bit disappointed because I realized there was only probably about eight images that I was really happy with, that I'm proud of, and that I would put into my portfolio. Now, we often say that 12 good shots in a year is a good year, so eight's not bad, I'm a third shot, and in the grand scheme of things, it's still gonna be fine, but it's made me think a little bit differently about 2020 and the direction I want to take with my landscape photography. So I think the problem was that probably eight times out of 10 last year, I was going out with pretty much the sole intention of getting a good shot because that would then help me or allow me to make a video that I was happy with as well. And I think it's possibly part of the reason that it didn't quite go right, because I think the two out of 10 times that I just went and enjoyed the experience was when I came back with the much better shots. So I'm shifting my intention this year to rather than go out planning to get a specific shot, 
I'm just going to go out and enjoy the experience, enjoy the outdoors, get back really to the very reason I got into landscape photography in the first place, and that's to enjoy the outdoors, to enjoy the fresh air, get that physical exercise. I just love being outside and I want to do much more of it as I move through 2020. And that includes actually in the winter because why not be outside in the winter? You've got warm clothing, you've got the right gear. You can spend all day outside quite comfortably uh, without needing to rush back to be indoors like everybody else does. Not you, I mean everybody else. I'm just grabbing a time lapse of that absolutely stunning scene. I think that's gonna be a really nice one. But it's one of these moments when the time lapse is going for about 10 minutes, it takes to capture it. I can just sit here and enjoy things. It's seriously windy though. Uh, I've just managed to find this slightly sheltered spot, but yeah, it's still fantastic. I love being outside, love it. Right, I'm set up for another shot and I was going to head back down, but the light is starting to do something quite interesting. So I really want to make the most of that. But at the position where I'm stood now, a little bit further down from where I was before, I've now just got this absolutely fantastic view of the mountains in the distance and a couple of those higher ones are snow capped as well. And it just looks fantastic. And as that light is striking those mountains, it's creating a really interesting panorama view essentially so that's what I'm going to capture but that snow on top of there as it catches that light is just looking really blue and then as we move around towards this side we've got some warm color in the clouds so you've just got this kind of progression of white balance from really blue to really yellow over the right hand side and it's producing a really interesting scene and I'm just going to capture that like I said in a panorama now I've got the camera on a tripod I normally do Panorama's handheld, but I think I can probably do uh, at 135 millimeters, probably about five shots just in landscape mode rather than going portrait. Uh, just to, I don't know, just because I want to. Uh, and it's, it'll be enough resolution in, the, in that file at the end. So yeah, I'm just gonna start over on the left-hand side. I'm at F8 because everything is right over in the distance. I've got 1 15th of a second, I saw 100. Yeah, and I'm just gonna start over on the left-hand side. Just got it rotating around on the tripod like that. I'm fo focused in already. Uh, the light's not doing anything particularly special at the moment, but we're just gonna go ahead and shoot that really quickly all the way around. And then we should end up with a really nice image. Let's just keep going on that. So nothing has changed this year. I'm still quite scared of cows. And I've got three just over there. You don't normally see cows up at this kind of height. It's unnerving me enough to want to get down off this mountain before it gets dark because I don't want to run into a cow when it's dark because I will shit myself. <sighs> These cows know I'm coming. This is right in front of the gate. I'm going to have to climb the fence. They've been there at the start of the day. I probably would have just gone home. <laughs> 